na kaschid jayate jiva, sang bhavesya na vidyate, e tat tat utmang satyang, yatra king chin na jayate. No jiva is ever born. There does not exist any cause that can produce it. This is the highest truth, that nothing is ever born. All these ideas regarding the discipline of the mind, evolution resembling the creation of forms from iron and clay, as well as ideas regarding devotional practices, are given as means to realization of the nature of ultimate reality. They have, in themselves, no meaning whatsoever. The truth regarding ultimate reality is that no jiva is ever born. The individual jiva, whom one knows empirically as the agent and the enjoyer, is not born in any way whatsoever. Therefore, no cause can ever exist which may produce the Atman, which is by nature unborn and non-dual. In other words, no jiva can ever be born, as the cause which may produce it does not exist. Of all the relative truths described in scriptures as means for realization of ultimate reality, this alone is the supreme truth, that nothing whatsoever is ever born in or of that Brahman, which is of the nature of ultimate reality. Namaste. I remember back in 2005, sitting on a park bench in Mexico City in one of its beautiful old parks and looking at the sky and thinking, how is it possible that the spiritual living being becomes entangled with matter? How is it possible that we can even perceive matter? Because the spiritual living entity is so completely different from the material world. How is it possible? I just don't get it. <laughs> so many years later, after much research and contemplation, meditation, and other spiritual practices, here's the conclusion. This is the final verse of the third chapter of Mandukya Upanishad Karika. And here we have the ultimate truth. No jiva is ever born. Which is kind of a contradiction in terms because jiva means one who is born. So how is it possible then? Because Brahman is the source and ultimate reservoir of everything, especially consciousness. But Brahman also is described in the Upanishads as not being related to anything else, to not being a cause or an effect of anything else. Because Brahman is one without a second. Actually, it doesn't say Brahman is one. It just says Brahman is without a second. Just like Advaita. Huh? It's not Ek Dvaita. <laughs> the truth of oneness. It's Advaita. Not two. In the same way, this Brahman is called Ajatta, unborn. So try to understand. There really is no material world. It doesn't exist. It can't exist. It can't exist because Brahman is not two. It can't be a cause. It can't create anything. It, it's not an actor. There is no action that can take place without duality. 
So if duality is illusion, so is everything that appears in it. See, this is the highest truth. This is the ultimate conclusion of all Vedas and Vedanta and Upanishads. So what does that mean for us? It means that we were never actually born. We are unborn. We are Brahman. We are that which gives rise to everything. See, unrealized people are identified with the body and mind. And they think, this body is real. And the world is real. And the mind and senses are showing me that world in reality. This is like, kind of like a hypnotic trance, huh? post-hypnotic suggestion. You will believe that the world is real, you know? This is the Jedi mind trick. <laughs> you are not really Brahman. Yes, you are. What else could you be? Like, people used to approach Ramana Maharshi and inquire about Turiya. How can I realize Turiya? How can I realize Brahman? And he would ask them, well, are you conscious? And they would say, well, yeah, sure, of course I'm conscious. And are you conscious that you're conscious? Well, yeah, of course. And he would say, then, you're in Turiya. You are Brahman. Because only Brahman is the source of consciousness. And, and Turiya is simply consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. So actually, everybody is Brahman. And everybody is in Turiya all the time. But because of avyaya, superimposition of these ideas that I am the body, that the world is real, that the senses are a truthful representation of reality, <laughs> which they're not at all. Because of these ideas, which are actually ignorance, huh? See, this is the snake being superimposed on the rope, which is Brahman. It doesn't affect the rope at all. Brahman remains the same as it always has been and always will be. But we suffer because we are trying to make this fantasy real and it never lives up to our expectations, does it? So just look at it. Try to understand. Understand this knowledge that leads to enlightenment and freedom. This creation is simply a show. It's just a mirage, a temporary hallucination like a TV show, like this video. It appears on your screen at a certain point and it lasts for a few minutes and then it goes away. Isn't it? Everything in the world is like that. And because it has a creation, because it has a beginning, it also has an end. And because it has a beginning and an end, it's not real. If it has to be created, if it has to begin, in other words, at all, then it's not real because it's fabricated out of something else, whatever existed previous to that. And of course, the ultimate original source of everything is Brahman because Brahman is the pure, unsullied, original consciousness behind everything. So everything is actually made of nothing but Brahman. 
and only Brahman actually exists during the creation. And after the creation is finished, only Brahman remains. And in one view, creation is eternal, but the objects within creation are all temporary. But it's the same difference. <laughs> it still means that it's all an illusion. It's all Maya. It doesn't really exist because everything that has a beginning and an end is unreal. This means we should develop a healthy detachment, that we should not be so caught up in the material world and the material body and so on. And all of the austerities and penances and pujas and meditations and the rites and rituals of Vedic spiritual life are oriented towards developing this detachment. But we see that, first of all, people ignore the scriptures. They don't study the scriptures, or if they do, they study them superficially, only as a means for them to get what they want. But that's not the purpose of the scriptures. The purpose of the scriptures is to bring us to the realization that, actually, I don't want anything. <laughs> I am already complete. I am Brahman. I am that which existed before this world, and I am that which will continue afterwards without end. Still, always complete. Purnam. Even when the creation exists, Brahman is still complete. It's not diminished in any way, it's not altered, it's not changed not transformed, not impacted, not at all. Because Brahman is the reality. The creation is an illusion. It's just like after I make this video, or even while I'm making this video, I'm not changed at all. I'm the same person before, during, and after the video. So in the same way, before, during, and after the creation, Brahman is the same, unchanged, unaffected, not a cause nor an effect. So this is the greatest truth. It's called Ajatavada, and it is the final realization of Jnana Yoga, which is the consciousness of Turiya, Awareness of awareness. Consciousness of consciousness. This is the path. This is the end of the path, the top of the mountain. There's nothing beyond this in the Vedas, the Upanishads, or any other scriptures. So all of the stories and the rites and rituals and the sadhanas and prayers and so on in the scriptures are relative truths, relative to the material creation, of limited scope, but they form a graduated path, a step-by-step -step method for realizing Brahman and attaining the perfection of consciousness. So they are all valuable in their place. Every step of the path is essential. None can be omitted or else the conclusion is never reached. And that's why we teach the complete Vedic path, four stages of consciousness, four forms of yoga, and four levels of realization, culminating in the Ajatavada. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.